Well, all right. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you got some good things written down there. Uh, Rosie said, I'll share a win, but then you didn't share the win, Rosie. So uh, share the win on there. Or you want me to unmute you so you can share it. I guess I'm not sure if, that, if that's what it was. Hey, Mike. So um, the other thing that I, we've got in here in this chat box from Julie was a victory to me is that wonderful feeling of joy that comes from effort and purpose. Thanks, Julie. I'm actually going to talk about uh, the effort uh, today is kind of what I wanted to, to hit on. So uh, we'll spend a little bit of time going through and talking about that. Um, oh, so Rosie, Rosie's asking me to unmute her so that she can share her win. All right, let me get that. Hang on one sec, Rosie, and I'll let you share a win here. All right, I've given you the ability, Rosie, to unmute, I think. Oh, sorry, it was kind of a long one, but so I have these buyers I've been working with um, looking at very low priced mobile homes and I showed them Sunday some more mobile homes and they basically, the husband says, you know, I just don't think we're finding what we want in our price range. So my heart drops, you know, they want to put it on hold, but then he follows up with, I think we're going to have to sell one of our two of our rentals and just buy a higher, you know, house instead of a mobile home. I get excited again and I offer to sell, you know, to assist him in selling his rentals and he makes it very clear because these are in another county area that they have an agent they've used for years, they love them and they're going to stick with their agent, but he assured me I'd get the purchase in my county. Leave it at that and I, you know, I told him well, I'm not doing my job if I don't offer, left it at that, the next day I get a text from the wife saying she's so frustrated that her agent told her they can't sell their rentals because of COVID. So I call her and I say, I don't think that information is accurate. Let me look some stuff up and I, I'll get some information to you tonight. You know, you should be able to sell. ask her a bunch of other questions, of course, and told her I thought she, should, she had every right to sell. So I do some homework that night, talk to some people. I send them information, including an entire listing presentation. Tell her, hey, you know, I, I just sent it to you. Give me a call. We'll review it, blah, blah, blah. Next day, I get a text from them. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Get them both going. And so. That was exciting for me. That's awesome. Good job, Rosie. So cool. Hey, thanks for sharing that. That's so cool. Thank you. All right. Hey, so um, appreciate you doing doing that, Rosie. As you did that, I thought, man, maybe we should have somebody unmute and share a win every day. That might be kind of cool. But uh, thank you. That's so cool. Well, hey, um, here's what I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions first before we started today. And actually, before I even do that, I got to tell you. Today, driving in, I was pretty excited, and here's why. Today is like a, or should be, I should say, maybe it's it's not a national holiday. You guys are thinking about today as being April Fool's Day joke, and 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 after last week, I'm expecting, you know, last week I had a an Easter bunny come running in here, so I'm kind of keeping my back to the door of, in case like all of a sudden a hippopotamus or something comes running in today, but... But today's April 1st, which you would think of it as uh, April Fool's Day. But yeah, Rob just threw in the chat box. Today is opening day of baseball. So you guys got to know that for me to be here talking to you guys is a struggle. No, I'm just kidding. Because baseball doesn't start. To, the games don't start till like 11 o'clock today. But today's opening day of baseball. And it should be a national holiday. So anyway, I'm excited for today. I get We get to start baseball and... Uh, that's always a good day for me. So, all right. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, here we go. So uh, here's what we're going to do is here's my question for you. Today is the first day of the second quarter. How did the first quarter go for you? Now, you should have had some goals set and put in place for you before the first of the year. And if not, then shortly after the first of the year. So my question for you is, and, and you can answer in the chat box if you want to, you don't have to. But more just, I want you to think about how are you doing in terms of achieving the goals that you have set for yourself? Are you on track for what you are wanting to accomplish for the goals that you have set for yourself? And if you are, fantastic. If you're not, what do you need to change? What needs to be a little bit different in order for you to get to and achieve those goals? So I want you to think about that for just a minute. Of what do I need to change if I'm not on track? And if I am, what have I done that has gotten me with a business I've gotten so far this year? So think about that and, and implement some things that, hey, here's what I need to keep doing in order to hit my goals, or this is what I need to change. And so that's what I want to talk a little bit about with you guys for 
today is in terms of achieving those goals and what that whole thing looks like. And essentially, I want to just talk about process with you guys a little bit. So where, where I had this idea is I had read in a book, it's called The Practicing Mind. And it's been a few years since I actually read that book, The Practicing Mind. But in the book, there's a quote in there that Thomas Stirner is the, off, is the author, S-T-E-R-N-E-R. -E and, and there's a quote that he says in the book that, that is, here's what it says, is when we reminisce about something we tried to acquire, the process is what comes to mind, not the object itself. So think about that for a minute from your, from your perspective. When you think about something that you worked really hard to acquire and to get in your life, if, if I were to ask you to stop and talk to me about it, nine times probably out of 10, what you're going to talk to me about is the process that you went through to get it, not the object itself. Okay, so with that, I want, I've got a story that I wanna share with you and, and, and I've a, got a, uh, a picture that I'm gonna show you. Here, so I'm gonna pull this up on the screen so you can see it. So what you're looking at right here is this little red alarm clock. Now, this alarm clock sits on the side of my bed. Now, the interesting thing, and I don't know why this is, well, I, I have an idea, I guess, but this little red alarm clock that you see there, that this red alarm clock means a lot to me. Now, you can see it's missing a handle for the volume and things, but here's what happened is now for whatever reason, I don't know why this is, it sits on my wife's side of the bed. I have a clock on my side of the bed. I don't know why she has my red alarm clock because it's special to me. So I guess I must really love her that I would let her have my little red alarm clock. But I wanna tell you the story quickly about this little red alarm clock. Now, as a I was about 12 years old and I had gone with my mom to the store and when we got down to, we had gone to, the name of the store was True Value, which I'm pretty sure those still exist, which is basically a little hardware store. And my mom and I are standing at the checkout line at True Value. And I look over and I see this display case. And inside of that display case is this little red alarm clock. Now, keep in mind, I'm about 12 years old at the time. And I look at it and I said to my mom, I need to get an alarm clock in my bedroom. And my mom said, okay. And I said, well, there's one right there. So can we buy that little red alarm clock? And my mom said, well, you can buy it. And I said, well, I don't have any money, mom. So can you buy it for me? And she said, no, I'm not going to buy it for you, but you can buy it. And I said, okay, well, how am I going to do that? Now, there was something that, that I don't know if this even actually still exists. I think it does, because I think I saw at Walmart a number of years ago this, but, but my mom explained to me the process of layaway. Now, I don't know how many people are on here that are, are younger generation than what my generation is. I know the ones from my generation will remember putting something on layaway, but some of the younger that may be on this call probably don't know what that means to put something on layaway. Well, it's because to, in today's world, what we do if we want something, we go put down our credit card, pay for it, we take it home, and then we continue to pay for it after the fact with interest on top of it. Well, to put something on layaway meant that you would go to the store and you would put a little bit of a down payment. You would give them some money and say, I want to buy. So I said, I want to buy this alarm clock. And if I remember right, when I was 12 years old, I think my mom gave me a quarter. I want to say it was like 12 bucks or something. I don't remember exactly how much this little red alarm clock you're looking at cost. But I want to say I gave them like a quarter. And then from there, my mom said, okay, if you want that alarm clock, you are going to have to go and do jobs to earn the money to pay for the alarm clock. And so here's what would happen is I would go and mow lawns. I found, uh, I would mow my grandma's lawn. And then I found another little old lady that lived up the street that at 12 years old, she said I could mow her lawn. So I would mow her lawn once a week. I would mow my grandma's lawn once, once a week to make money. And then, and I still remember I would jump on my bike and it was probably about a mile from my house to get from my house down to the true value. And I would ride my bike that mile down, down the hill. It was, it was downhill the whole way to get there. I would go downhill. 
I would walk in and I would hand them a dollar or whatever it was to pay for that alarm clock. Well, I remember the day that I finally knew I was making the final payment on that alarm clock. And I remember walking into the store so excited and, and I had ridden my bike down there. I paid the last dollar or two or whatever it was. I don't remember, but I remember paying that little last amount. They put it in a sack. I remember putting, taking the sack, putting it over the handlebars of my car and riding my bike back up the hill to my house and setting that alarm clock up. Well, as you can see how, I mean, here it is now, I'm, I'm now what, 51. I was 12 years old when I did that. I still have and use that alarm clock, or I guess I should say my wife still uses that alarm clock. And, but here's the thing. If you go back, if we go back to the quote that I said to you, is when we reminisce about something we tried to acquire, the process is what comes to mind, not the object itself. See, when I look at that clock, it, the clock itself doesn't mean anything to me. It's the process I went through to acquire it. So as I asked you, how are you doing on your goals towards this year? What I want you thinking about is what is the process that has gotten you to where you are? What do you need to change if you're not on track to get to where you want to go? And, and, and here's the thing. So here's what I wanted to show you. So I'm going to share my screen again here with a whiteboard and, and write some, something on here. Now, here's what typically we learned in high school is the shortest distance from point A here over to point B is a straight line, even though mine's still a little bit squiggly there. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So ultimately what that means is the shortest distance for you between where you are and where you're wanting to be is going to be a straight line. My uh, computer's sliding on here. So hold on. I got to make an adjustment here. It's trying to slide off the, uh, the table there. So I apologize. It may not have perfect on the screen there. But the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, I don't know about you guys. But when I have gone from the goals that I've set to where I want to accomplish something, it typically does not end up being a straight line. And, and so for me, that's what I, here's what I want to talk to you about is in terms of sailing. Now, I don't know how many people, we got people from California on here. I don't know how many of you are sailors and know a lot about sailing. But if I had here, let me draw my version of a sailboat here. So this is my version of a sailboat that, that I've got here. Now on the bottom is the keel for those that don't uh, know a lot about sailing. But so here's a sailboat. And if I wanted to sail from point A right here over to point B right here, typically you would just go jump in your boat and you would set the sail to get you there. Well, for those who maybe don't know a whole lot about sailing, what would happen though if the wind is blowing like this. Because remember, as I said, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, unfortunately, as you and I go from what it is we have to what it is we want to achieving our goals, we are typically not gonna have that take place in a straight line. Instead, we're gonna have to use something that in sailing is called tacking. See, if I'm sitting at right here at point A in this sailboat, which probably won't float anyway, but, but if I was sitting here at point A and I want to get to point B and the wind is blowing straight into my face, can I do it? Now, typically people who don't know a lot about sailing would say, no, you can't. But the truth is, yes, you can get there. So here's the thing. Even when you are going towards what you want and you're working towards your goals, and you're prospecting, and you're making calls, and it doesn't feel like you're getting where you need to be or where you want to be, sometimes we have this ability of feeling like, I'm not even close. I'm not getting where I need to go. Well, see, to an uninitiated sailor you, they, that doesn't understand tacking, you can get there in a sailboat. But what you have to do is this. You first have to sail this way. Then you're going to turn and sail back this way. Then you're gonna turn and sail back this way and then finally back this way. That's what tacking looks like. That is how you are going to get from point A to point B when the wind is blowing directly in your face. See, as you go from what it is you have to what it is you want, your goals, you're gonna feel like I'm off track heading in this direction. 
I, it doesn't feel like I'm getting there. And in meaning, sometimes even your significant other will say to you, just sell a house today. And you're like, well, no, but I made a bunch of phone calls. Well, okay, but did you sell a house? Well, no, I made a bunch of phone calls. To them, it looks like I'm off track. But if you will keep doing it, stay with the process. See, don't focus so much on the end result. Focus on, am I doing the things that will get me there? Now, I have talked to you guys before about it, and I'm sure I will continue to do it and more and more and share it with you. But the number one objective you should have should be around and make it simple is just setting appointments. How many appointments do you need to set on a daily basis or a weekly basis to get to your goals? See, back into the number of transactions you do and how many calls do you have to make to get the contacts? How many contacts do you have to make to get the appointments? And if you'll do that and stick with it, even though it may feel like I'm doing this, that I'm off track most of the time, you will notice though, that as I stick with it, I eventually, as I keep tacking here, end up in that spot. So it's about the process, not the result. And here's the thing, at the end of the day, if you have to struggle a little bit to get there, you're gonna appreciate it much, much more because of the struggle. So I just want to remind you to, you know, stay positive. Keep in mind that, yes, I may not be there yet, but I'm on the way. If you're doing the things that are necessary to get you there, you're going to make it. If you will just stick with it and stick with the process, you're going to make it and you're going to get there. All right. So here's my question for you for today. What are you going to do differently or what do you need to continue to do? So either in your own mind or throw it in the chat box if you want. But I want you to answer that question. What do I need to continue to do because it's working? Or what do I need to change? How, how can I tack, use that tacking method a little bit to get to where I want to go? Because here's what I know. You have the ability to do it. You have within you greater potential than you understand or you realize. You have the ability to accomplish amazing things, even though in your mind, you think, well, everyone else can do it, but I can't. Well, guess what? The people who have done it at one point felt the same way that you do that, well, I can't seem to do it. Stick with it. Stick with the process. If you will follow the recipe, you will make the cake or whatever it is that you're trying to build. The same thing. So stick with the process. Continue to make the calls. Continue to work on the skill set of improving, asking for appointments, and then get better on presenting, and it will happen. All right, guys. Hey, thank you for being with me today. Hope your favorite baseball team wins. And if you don't have one, then I guess uh, go pick one. But happy, exciting day for me today, opening day of baseball. The next six months to eight months, I guess, actually probably are uh, going to be exciting because we get to have baseball and uh, hope you guys have an outstanding day. And well, let's close it up with our closing affirmations. Thanks for being with me today. And if I can find the affirmation.